Hey there, and welcome to another PMAT quick tutorial video. If you're watching this video now, it means that you've hit the point where you are ready to start analyzing some data. However, if you still haven't gotten to the point where you've installed PMAT, either as an independent application or through MATLAB, then you should look at the videos on our channel at how to do that now. You'll need to do that before you're ready to take part in this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you load in Tucker Davis technology data formats for either single data processing or batch processing. As usual, feel free to comment down below or to visit www.thebarkerlab.com. You can find a link for our website as well as a link for the GitHub to download PMAT in the description below. When you're ready to start loading in data, the place that you're gonna to wanna to go are to these two buttons on the top left. The first says load single Tucker Davis technologies or TDT data. And the second says TDT batch processing. If you wanna load in a single TDT data file, there's a primary assumption here that you are loading in one experiment worth of data. And it's going to ask you to target the exact folder containing that data. On the other hand, if you're interested in conducting batch processing, then the place you're going to be directing PMAT to is an entire folder containing data. One of the primary assumptions, however, when you're conducting batch processing is that all of the different experimental files that were collected in that folder were run using the exact same parameters. What we mean by this is that the events were tagged in the same way and that the files were recorded with a common structure. So let's get into loading a single set of TDT data. Well, one of the first things you might be asking if you're new to the Tucker Davis technology system is where exactly you should go to find the correct data files. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna direct you to the folder where I have the PMAT sample data. What I've done here is I've taken the same sample data that all of you have, and I've just copied it twice. If you don't have this data, you can download it from the GitHub. And again, the description contains the link to the GitHub so you could download the sample data if you don't have any of your own data that you'd like to run when testing this out. So for the Tucker Davis Technologies format, users often end up with a series of folders called tanks that contain either all of the data from one animal or all of the data from one experiment, and then a series of subfolders that Tucker Davis Technologies calls blocks. If you've been using the system for a while, you're probably familiar with this, but the important thing is that the final folder containing your data is going to have a set of files that are fairly easy to recognize. The one that I always use is either this .tev file or this .tsq file. So these are the two primary files that contain the data that's been recorded using the Tucker Davis Technologies platform. Having figured this out, we can now return to the PMAT suite. And once you're there, you can hit load single TDT data, and you can navigate back to the folder that contains the sample data or experimental data that you're working with. And again, what we want to do is specifically navigate down to that folder that contained those .tev and .tsq files. Once you've selected this folder, then you can hit the select folder button down at the bottom to affirm that that's the folder that you want to go into. The first thing that you're going to see then is a pop-up and this is going to be what we call the sample buffering window. The sample buffering window is asking you how much time that you want to exclude from the beginning and the end of the experiment. And the reason for this is very simple. Most of the commercial fiber photometry systems don't turn on the LEDs that are required to run a fiber photometry experiment until you hit start on their programs, which means that there can be a, a warm up rise and even a fall at the end of the experiment, um, and these can influence the processing of your data. So you can exclude as few as one sample here, or you can exclude as many as you'd like. What we recommend as a rule of thumb is approximately two to five seconds, and so the default that we've set here is 2,000 samples. We're going to hit OK here, but one thing that I want to point out, and I'll walk through this as a separate example, is that depending on how your TDT experiment is set up, uh, we do provide in our documentation 
some guidance for how to name all of your different variables within the TDT system. And so the screen that you experience next might be slightly different depending on your configuration. What we see here, because we've used the default naming, is that it's going to pop up with a window that says it sees a variable, one of the R event variables, that we think belongs to part of the same event or behavior. And so in the case here, tick is each count of the TDT clock, and we're going to say, yes, these belong together. We want these to increment as one group. We also see this for the video file. And depending on what your experimental setup is, some people will always hit yes as a default here. But if you have a reason to keep certain events separate and you want to count them as incremental but different events, um, you might be using this for some sort of experimental behavior, like incrementing lever presses from a mouse or a rat, for example, then in that case, you might want to hit no. And this will be something that you just need to play around with until you understand your own experimental parameters. But for the most part, we've designated this as a way to hit yes and group alike behaviors that we think are part of the same event so that you don't end up with an event list filled with separate counts from one single event node. Once you've done this, you'll see that the PMAT suite is now completely populated. All of the areas that were grayed out before are now here, and you can access them in order to be able to start analyzing your data. So before we move on to the example of batch processing, let me point out to you just quickly and go through this one more time in case it helps anyone, what might happen if your data came in in a different format without the default naming recommendations. So in this case, again, let's hit load TDT data, and we'll go back to an entirely different set of sample data and we'll hit select folder. In this case, you're still going to see the sample buffering window, and this is always the first to pop up. So again, you can stick with the default here if you're just learning to use the PMAT suite and assume that we've done our due diligence and 2000 samples is the premium place for a cutoff. And then the next two windows that you'll see will ask you to select from the set of Tucker Davis Technologies stream channels uh, the two streams that correspond to first your signal channel in the window that we see here, and next your control channel. Typically, users name these with something that represents the wavelength of the LED that they're using to excite either their GCAMP or their neurotransmitter sensor or whatever they might be recording. So in this case, the 465 is a blue light that represents the signal channel, and then the control channel is this 405 nanometer wavelength LED channel. So for this, you should know what your own experimental parameters are. Um, but if you need help with this, it's something you can always reach out and we'll do our best to help guide you through the process of selecting these. But typically, if you're, if you're going along with a TDT installation and you've had some help with that installation, your file names are going to be something similar to this. Something that's around 465 to 490 in the naming is going to be your signal channel, and something right around 405 nanometers is going to be your control channel. Hit OK. Again, we get the prompts if we want to group behavior together. In this case, there's only video data. We hit yes. And what you'll see is, again, the PMAT suite after a second will be repopulated with all of the specific behaviors that are related to this file. Depending on the size of your file, this could take just a few seconds, or it might take even as long as the better part of one minute. So be patient while this is happening and wait for the screen to update. So now, now that you've seen two different loading cases, let's move on to what you would expect to do for batch processing. In the case of batch processing, again, there's only one assumption, which is that all of your data were recorded using the exact same parameters. So in this case, if we go back to the original folder that we were looking at, you can see I've taken the sample data that's available on the GitHub website, and I've just copied it twice. So everything from these files is exactly the same. And if you're looking to play around with batch processing, but you don't have uh, you don't yet have an entire experiment filled with multiple data files, then you can do exactly what I've done here. You can create a sample data folder and you can make two copies of the sample data that we provided for you. And in this case, 
we don't want to drop down and select the folder that contains those TEV and TSQ files, but instead we want to stay up in the main folder that contains all of these outer folders that we call tanks. So once you select this folder, it's going to ask you for all of the same parameters, but in this case you're setting those parameters for every file in the batch. You're only going to set these on the first file, but just remember that the values that you're setting here are going to be applied to everything that you do in the processing of multiple files moving forward. So it's a good idea, perhaps in this case, to stick with the defaults. And what you'll notice is that the system is populated again. One major change that allows you to, to recognize that you're in a batch processing mode is the run all selections button is going to turn yellow. And this indicates that um, you've started the process of loading in a folder and that you're ready for batch processing. In our remaining videos, we get into exactly how you can then use the PMAT suite to start analyzing your data. Uh, but for now, hopefully this gives you a really good idea of just how to get your data in to start processing. And we wish you the best of luck in starting out using the PMAT suite. Please take your time, watch the rest of the videos, learn as much as you can, and happy analyzing. We'll catch you next time.